cut is a break or opening in the skin. It is also called a laceration. A cut may be deep, smooth, or jagged. It may be near the surface of the skin or deeper. For the first aid, you must stop the bleeding by applying a gentle pressure with sterile gauze, clean cut, or anything that you can use to apply pressure. Next, clean the wound by rinsing the wound in drowning water. You may not also use soap as it may irritate the wound. Then, pat it dry and apply a thin layer of povidone iodine or betadine solution to the wound. And lastly, dress or cover the wound using a gauze and an adhesive tape. Change the covering daily and keep the wound clean to avoid infection. Sprain. Sprains are injuries that involve the stretching of the ligaments. This usually occurs when a joint is overextended from its usual range of motion. For the first 48 hours after the injury, we can use the RICE method as the first aid. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So it's very important that we elevate the injured part to decrease its swelling. Rest the injured part until it's less painful and we'll have to use an ice bag or wrap an ice pack or cold compress in a towel and place over the injured part immediately. Continue for no more than 20 minutes at a time, 4 to 8 times a day. Compression. Support the injured part with an elastic compression bandage for at least 2 days. If the pain is unbearable, you can give the patient ibuprofen or acetaminophen for pain and swelling. A fracture is a partial or complete break in the bone. There are many different types of fractures. Bone fractures are often caused by falls, injury, or because of a direct hit or kick to the body. The broken bones can be immobilized with either a splint or a string. A splint helps to immobilize the bone before professional medical attention can take over. After the splint, we can use a sling, as a sling can help stabilize an arm that is broken. We can also use ice packs to reduce pain and swelling. Place gently over the site of the fracture, not to be placed directly over an open wound. A concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury or TBI caused by a bump, blow, or jolt to the head or by a hit to the body that causes the head and brain to move rapidly back and forth. For the first aid, we'll have to sit the patients down and apply a cold compress to the injury to reduce the swelling. A bag of frozen peas wrapped in a towel will also do. A blister is a painful skin condition where fluid fills a space between layers of skin. They form when something like two tight shoes repeatedly rubs against your skin. For the first aid, it is advisable to not pop blisters and let them heal on their own. As soon as the skin is healed, clean the blister with soap and water. The next thing that we'll have to do is to pat it dry using a clean towel and Apply an antibiotic cream to treat the blister. Lastly, cover it with a gauze and adhesive tape. Repeat the steps to clean the wound and avoid infection. So here are 5 of the most common injuries that we might acquire outdoors and their first aid treatments as well. So as we already know, first aid, it is the initial process of assessing and addressing the needs of someone who is experiencing non-medical emergencies. It also allows a non-medical expert to quickly determine a person's physical condition and the course of treatment. It can also make a difference to a person's recovery and could save their life. Some of the purpose of first aid is to sustain the life, to prevent suffering, to prevent secondary complications, and to promote speedy recovery. 
The next thing that we'll have to know is the four C's or the principles of first aid. Call for help, calmly take charge, check the scene and the casualty, and carefully apply the rightful first aid. As for the action plan, we must have to first assess the situation, assess the safety of yourself and the casualty, treat the casualty, arrange the removal of the casualty to hospital or safe area, and lastly, we'll have to write a report or communicate the status of the casualty. So in order for one to become an effective first aider, he or she must have the following skills or characteristics. He must be an observer, a good listener, she can feel, talk, touch, provide, and build trust with the casualty. Some of the responsibilities of a first aider is to assess the situation quickly and safely and call for appropriate help. It is also his responsibility to identify the level of injury or the nature of illness affecting the casualty or the victim. Next is to give early and appropriate treatment in a sensible order of priority and to make and pass on a report to give a further help if it's required. But a first aider can never announce the death of a casualty. It is very important that we learn first aid because it will enable us to assist the person who become injured in the event of an accident or emergency situation until help arrives. So a first aid skill can be applied in our home, the workplace, or in public locations. Therefore, the more first aid certified people there are in a community, the safer that community becomes. Also, as we know, when someone is sick or injured, they often need help. And first aid is the immediate medical attention that can save a person's life, prevent the situation from getting worse, or help someone recover more quickly. First aid is important because it can save someone's life. There are many medical emergencies where time is of the essence. A sick or injured person may not be able to hang on long enough until professional arrive, especially if it's difficult for personal to reach them. If there's someone there who knows first aid, they can save the person's life by providing aid like CPR. The importance of first aid is recognized all over the world and its capacity to make a difference cannot be overstated. To have a competent first aid practitioner present is reassuring to the casualty as well as to concerned people at the scene. The first aider is the person most likely to take action and manage an emergency, and first aid makes a significant contribution to an ill or injured person's recovery and, in an overwhelming number of cases, has been the difference between life and death. So, it's very important that we learn first.